Hello everyone, we've gotten another monthly update for Power BI Desktop and this month we have some cool features that our users have been requesting. So let's get to it. In report view, we have some enhancements that will make quite a few users happy. We have customizable tooltips where users can now drag their own measures to show up uh, in tooltips. We also have conditional formatting in tables, which allows users to format the backgrounds of cells based on a value. Uh, we're also allowing you to publish straight to your pyramid server from desktop. Um, also, scrolling can load more data in charts. If you just scroll to the end, you will get more data loaded into your chart. And finally, you can uh, move uh, visuals around with keyboard just for fine placement of the visual. Another area of focus for the near future will be analytics. And this month we have a new quick calc that allows you to show the percent of the grand total in any of the measures you used inside a visual control. We also have many improvements to our data connectivity. So we have a few new connectors for Informix, for Comscore Digital Analytics, for True and PlanView Enterprise. We also have improved our DB2 connector with a better driver. We've improved the text CSV connector with exposing some editable settings. Uh, we have improvements to the whole relational database connectors where we display the schema information to you. Um, we also have um, data sor source setting enhancements, um, including the migrate source capability. We have some advanced filter rows um, in dialog mode, um, inline input controls for function invocation in the query editor. We have some uh, improvements to query parameters with the ability to convert queries to parameters and vice versa, uh, support for URL parameters parameterization in multi-part URLs in the web connector. We also have support for parameterization in conditional columns dialog. Now, we also have the ability to save as uh, a Power BI template, not just the PBIX file. Um, some query step enhancements where we support drag and drop for reordering query steps. We've got a date picker for you to choose your date fields in the conditional columns dialog. And we also have a new context menu entry for, to where you can create new queries right from the query pane. So let's see some of these features in actions. And the first feature we'll uh, take a look at is customizable tooltips. Tooltips have become an essential component in providing more details to the end users and really providing more context about the data. And by default, when you uh, go to uh, Power BI, uh, the, in all of our visualizations, the default tooltip only shows you the data it has uh, on the data point. And in this category with this bar chart, it is showing you just the category and the actual value it is mapping. But sometimes you want to provide more information in this tooltips. And if you take a look here in the field well, you will see that we have this tooltips bucket here where you can just drag your measures inside here and show they will show up in the tooltip. So let's say we have here some sales amount by category, but we want to provide more detail in the in the tooltip. So maybe we want to say show how many units are being sold. Um, maybe we want to see how much sales tax is being paid uh, on each category. Um, maybe we want to, we, we're already showing these now, but, and we're showing the sales amount, but maybe we want to say, take, see the average sales amount for each unit in each category. So we can again, drag sales amount, uh, again, and instead of showing the sum, we will show the average and maybe something like units instead of the total. Uh, we can uh, apply a quick calc and show um, show uh, maybe the percentage of grand total. So to do that, instead of showing sum, you go to the quick calc here option and choose the percentage of grand total calculation. And once you do this, the pop-up will show uh, the percentage of units of the grand total. So you can see here that home appliances are 15.9% of the grand total, while computers are 39.15%. So 
So it is very easy to customize this tooltip and you know make it show the more data that is relevant for the end user. Another feature that was really requested by the end users was the ability to have conditional formatting in tables to make it really easy in especially large tables to show which values stand, stand out either as highs and lows. And we've added this ability to the table. So here we have some tables showing some uh, sales units and average unit of cost. And uh, let's say we want to add conditional conditional formatting to one of these uh, columns. So let's do it on average unit of cost. What you have to do is click here and choose conditional formatting option and this dialog will pop up. So basically what we want to do here is, you know, base this on average unit of cost, but you also have the option of basing this on another uh, on another value that that is being shown here. So you can choose the color for the minimum and have it be based on either the lowest value or fixed number that you put here. And you can choose the maximum and you can also have a diverging, which is sort of like a center value. So I guess we'll just uh, here for our purposes, we'll configure the minimum color to be the minimum value that is in this table, the highest, the maximum value. And we'll maybe just choose some colors, uh, green for uh, minimum, I guess yellow for the center, and we'll go with the reddish for the maximum and click on OK. And you'll notice that basically our table has been formatted with these colors. So high values like 225 are colored in red, while low values such as 56 are more green. And you'll also notice that uh, the conditional formatting overrides any of the table formatting that we may have put in, like this blue uh, color for alternating rows. Another cool feature in this release is the ability to load more data as we as we need it. So we have a bar chart here showing some data and we have a lot of more data points behind the scenes. We don't try to uh, show them all at once, but what you can do is scroll to the end and when you reach the end, we'll load more data and send your scroll bar back. And you can keep doing this as long as there is data, we'll be loading more data. Um, so the, the only thing to keep in mind here is that this works with a categorical x-axis. If you have a continuous x-axis like uh, daytime, for example, uh, you need to change it to a categorical because with a continuous axis, we'll just try to roll up to a year or a month or something and show all your data, all your data at once. Mm -hmm.